Hey everybody, this week we've been talking about domain and range, and today is no different. But today we're going to talk about how it applies to the real world. Before we get to the problems, we have a few vocabulary words that we need to go over. So this first table should look familiar. We're going to start with domain. Domain is the set of all input. If it were on the graph, it would be represented by the x values. And this is the independent variable of the situation. On the other hand, range is the set of all output. On the graph, we would be looking at the y-axis or the y-values. And this represents the dependent variable. So up until now, when we've been doing domain and range, I feel like we've been focusing on these top three. So domain goes with X, range goes with Y. But today, because we are applying this to real world situations, we are gonna focus a lot on independent and dependent variable. So let's get a definition so we know exactly what we're talking about. The independent variable will be the variable that, get, that can be changed or controlled. That means that you have control of what that number is. So something in real life that you control is how many candies you buy at the store, the amount of gas that you pump in your car. So something that you control would be the independent variable. Dependent, that's a quantity that depends on the independent variable. So a lot of times in the real world, this is gonna be cost or price. So how much you pay at a store will depend on how many groceries you bought. For discrete and continuous data, so that next box below, we've talked about it a little, but so far what I've been doing is I've been telling you this is a discrete graph, write it as such, or this is a continuous graph, write it as such. But today, since these are real world situations, you're gonna be able to determine that on your own. So for discrete data, what you're looking for is data that can be counted. So one of the biggest examples of discrete data would be people. If you wanna know how many people are in a room, you are gonna physically count one person, two person, three people, Another thing that can be counted as number of cars in a parking lot. You would count how many cars are there. Things like that, things that you have to count. So continuous data, on the other hand, is data that must be measured. So things like height. You wouldn't count how tall a person is you would measure their height with a measuring tape or a ruler. Um, length. Again, you measure with a ruler. Weight. That would be a scale. You stand on a scale to measure weight. Um, another one is time. So I know it's weird to say you measure time, but you do. That's what clocks do and stopwatches. They measure time. So as we're going through our situations here, there's a few things that you probably should be asking yourself to make it easier. So such as, what type of information is being presented in the situation? So this is where you have to decide if your information is discrete or continuous. Another important situation that you, or question that you should ask yourself is, what are the smallest and biggest values that would make sense in a situation? So for instance, if you're measuring how tall somebody is, it wouldn't make sense to say that they're negative five inches tall. There is no negative height. So just think about the situation and what makes sense. And then that last question is what type of numbers would make sense? 
Is it only whole numbers that would make sense? Or is it possible that you would be able to use decimals or that you'd be able to use fractions? Okay, so now we're gonna look at four examples. So inside of these notes, just unfold. We're gonna have four real world situations to go over and we're gonna discuss what a reasonable domain and range for each one would be. So this first one says, Rhonda is shopping for pears at the farmer's market. The total price of her purchase can be represented by the function P of X equals 2.5 X. That is an equation, so I'm gonna highlight it because I'm sure it's gonna be important. Then it says, Rhonda wants to purchase at least two pairs, but no more than six. So we need to decide what our independent and dependent variables are. So after reading this situation here, I know that pairs is one of the things that's important. And it says total price. So those are the two variables that we're gonna be concerned about. But which one do you have control of? I cannot control how much they're gonna charge me, how much the price is. What I can control is how many pairs that I buy. So that's gonna be the independent number of pairs. And since it's the independent variable, I know that goes with the letter X. Now dependent, that's gonna be the price, the total price. So how do I know what the price is gonna be? Well, it depends on how many pairs I buy. So normally I would say Y, but because we're using function notation right now, it's gonna be better to use what they did. So they use P of X. Okay, now we have to decide our data, is it discrete or is it continuous? So always look at your independent, the one that you're controlling. Would you count the number of pairs or would you measure the number of pairs? So in this case, you would count and that makes it discrete data. So when we're doing domain and range of discrete data, we list the numbers and we use those curly brackets. So I'm gonna open a set of those curly brackets and look at the last sentence of this problem. It says she wants to purchase at least two, but more, no more than six. So I would have two comma three comma four comma five comma six. And then we can close those brackets. So those are her only options. She cannot purchase any partials, so she can't like cut a pair into three pieces and only buy a third of it. It has to be a whole pair. So two, three, four, five, or six. Then for our range, range goes with our dependent variable, so with the price. So we need to know exactly how much would she pay if she wanted to buy two pairs. So here's our equation up here. We're gonna get two and we're gonna plug it into that X. So 2.5 times two would give me five. Then what if she bought three pairs? So if I go and I put a three where that X is at, 2.5 times three gives me 7.5. And if I continue this way, I'd have 10, 12.5, and 15. So that is the range which represents the price. So it's a possibility that she would end up paying 750 if she bought three pairs, or if she bought six pairs, she'd pay $15. Okay, let's take a look at the next example, number two. This one says, Ben is purchasing frozen yogurt. The total cost of his yogurt can be represented by the function c of x equals 0.15x plus 1.5. Ben will purchase a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 14 ounces of yogurt. So I can tell that they're talking about yogurt and then they're also talking about the total cost. We need to determine which one is independent and dependent. Well, which one can I control? So when I'm at the store, I control how much yogurt goes into my cup. So since that's the one I control, that's gonna be the independent variable. 
and they're measuring in ounces. So independent would be ounces of yogurt. Represented by X. The dependent is gonna be the total cost. How do I know what the cost is gonna be? Well, it depends on how much yogurt I get. And they are using C of X for cost. Okay, now, we need to determine whether this is discrete or continuous. So we are talking this time about ounces of yogurt. So if you've ever been to a yogurt shop, you know that what they do is they get your cup and they put it on top of a scale. They are weighing your yogurt. So since they are measuring it with some kind of tool, that makes it continuous. Because it's possible to get 13 and a half ounces. It's possible to get 12.2 ounces. All those partial values are true. So now, domain goes with my independent variable. So what are all the possible ounces of yogurt I could get? So when I look at the last sentence, it says minimum of 10 and maximum of 14. So we're going to write 10. This time it's not going to be a list. It's going to be an interval. So we're going to use less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 14. Then for range, that goes with the total cost. So I need to know how much would it cost if I got 10 ounces. So we're going to use this equation up here. And I'm just going to write this on the side. What would happen if I plugged in 10 where that, where that x is at? OK, so if you plug this in, you should get just three. We're talking about money, so I'm gonna write it as money, so 3.00, $3. Less than or equal to, we're using C of X now, less than or equal to, how much is it gonna cost if she gets 14 ounces? So plug in your 14. And this comes out to 3.6, but again, it's money, so I'm gonna write $3.60. Okay, let's look at our next one. It says, Andrea is a pet sitter, and she charges customers a fixed fee plus an hourly rate. The total cost per day can be represented by f of x equals 10.5 plus 7.5 x, and she works between one and six hours a day. So the two things that I think they're talking about here is the total cost and the hours that she spends um, pet sitting. So the one that she gets to control is how long she stays for pet sitting. She can tell them how long she wants to stay. So since she's controlling it, the independent variable is going to be the hours. So that would be x. The dependent is how much that she charges. And they use f of x here. So her charge, it changes depending on how many hours she stays there. So again, now we have to decide is this discrete or continuous? So this is based off the independent. Hours are measured. You would use a clock or a stopwatch to determine how long you spent there. So that is continuous. Also think about all the partials are true. So she can spend one hour, two hour, yes. But she could also spend two hours and 13 minutes. She can spend three hours, 12 minutes, and 45 seconds. You can break it down smaller, so that makes it continuous. The last sentence says she works between one and six hours. So that's going to be our domain. One is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to six. But our range, it depends on that equation. So I'm going to do this over to the side. This equation here, what would happen if we plugged in one where that X was at? So if you put that into the calculator, that should give you 18. We're talking about money, so I'm going to write it as 
less than or equal to f of x, less than or equal to, now what's gonna happen if I plug in six, if she stays for six hours? And when I plug this in, I get 55.5, but again, it's money, so we're gonna say 55.50. So that's our domain and range of this situation. Okay, and then our last problem it says, Sydney is ordering bars of soap online. The total cost for the soap can be found using the equation S of X equals 2.75 X plus three. It says she will order at least five bars of soap. Now it's supposed to say bars. So let's just fix that, pretend it said bars but no more than eight. So I underlined that's how I was going. The two variables are gonna be the bars of soap and the cost. So I control how many bars that I buy. So the independent is gonna be bars of soap. The dependent is gonna be the total cost. How much does it cost? for the soap, and they're using S of X. Okay, now to decide, is it discrete or continuous? So bars of soap, you count. I can buy one bar, two bar, three bar. So that makes it discrete. Also think about, are the partials true? Are they gonna let you cut that bar into five pieces and only pay for two of them? They are not. So because partials are not true, that makes this discrete. That makes it, I think, a little easier. That means that we're gonna write this as a set. So for our domain, which goes with the independent, it says she's gonna order at least five, but no more than eight. So we need to start at five, six, seven, and then stop at eight. Okay, then for the range, we need to know how much it's gonna cost when she buys each of these numbers. So if she were to buy five bars of soap, we're using this equation up here. So 275, plug in your five, and then plus three. And when I do that, I get 1675. And then go to the next one. 2.75, plug in six, and then plus three. And that gives me 19.50. The next one, if I plug in seven, that gives me 22.25. And then lastly, if I plug in eight, that will give me exactly $25. Okay, so that's the domain and range of that situation. Okay, so domain and range of real world situations, as you can tell, takes kind of a lot. You need to be able to identify independent and dependent, as well as the difference between discrete and continuous. Make sure these notes get written in and glued into your notebooks, and we will discuss this more later.